Hey guys, uh, Pierre here from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to our channel. Uh, today we're going to look at how to tie a um, copper john fly. It's a very effective nymph pattern that sinks very well. Uh, it's got a great profile, nymph profile, and it's also got a little bit of flash on the top of the nymph. The materials that we'll be using, first off the hook, a standard nymph hook that is 2x long and about uh, one times thick, one x thick wire or two x thick wire. So it's a kind, of, it's quite a thick wire and a long shank nymph hook. This is a size 14. For the bead, we'll be using a gold countersunk bead. This is a two and a half millimeter bead. For additional weight and to build up the bulk in the thorax, we'll be making use of 0.015 inch lead wire. Thread, we're going to use any 70 denier or smaller thread in brown, black um, or white. I'm going to make use of a very thin thread because this is a smaller fly. Uh, if you're using white thread, um, you can always color it with a permanent marker. Uh, for the tail, uh, we'll be making use of goose bite. This is goose bite in brown, just two fibers of that. For the abdomen, we're going to make use of golden ultra wire, UTC ultra wire. The wing case will be made from two different materials. On the top of the wing case, we have a flashback material, a material that's called flashback. It's, it's basically a flat, semi-translucent material that has a little bit of flash to it. I've even used candy wrappers, so you could can use any material that you want. Under that flash material we have scud back material. It's flexible so it, uh, you're able to pull it over the thorax quite tightly and then for the thorax itself we'll be using a trusty old peacock curl, just two fibers of that and to seal it all off we'll be using uh, Solari's UV resin and to add legs to the fly I just have some black hen neck hackle that I'll be using. You can use partridge or pheasant or I've even used mallard. You can make the legs from, from various different feathers. On the tool side of things, obviously a vise. Um, it's not necessary to have a rotary vise. We're just going to finish the fly off in this position. We're not going to turn the fly. You'll obviously use a bobbin on your thread. Just a normal scissor, pair of scissors would be fine. And a whip finishing tool and then also a UV torch to cure the UV resin. And then if you're going to use white thread, just a permanent marker to color the white thread while you're doing your whip finish. Um, and that's about all the tools and material that you'll need to tie the copper john. Um, so without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay guys, uh, the first step in tying the copper john is to place the bead onto the hook. So you do that by taking the bead smaller a smaller hole. The bead has got a small hole and a large hole. Let me just show you that first. So there's the bead's smaller hole. And if I rotate it around, the bead has a larger hole, larger hole as well. So take the small hole and just thread the bead small I'll first over the hook's point, if you can see. Just make sure that the hook is level. Just test it, that's fine, that's secure. That's more than secure. The next step is to break off a section of uh, lead wire. And I'm going to make about 10 wraps. On around the hook shank, just break it off. Cut off the back and then just slide it into the bead like that. Now attach your thread behind the lead wire, lock it in place and cut off the excess. Just run your thread all the way back and leave it hanging so that when, you're, when you leave your bobbin hanging the thread will intersect where the barb of the hook would be. This is a barbless hook, but if you can imagine it being right there, that would be right over the way the barb would be. If you're using a barb hook, just use that as a reference. This will just make sure that you stop your fly 
at the right place. Now cut off two sections from your goose bite. To prepare them you'll see that they have a natural curve to one side. So you take one of the fibers and put it back to back to the other fiber so that they flare outwards. Also make sure that the tips align you'll see that they flare outwards. The length of the tail would be about the same length or slightly sh shorter than the abdomen. So the abdomen is about where the lead wire ends between there and the base of the tail. So just measure that, pinch the material on the top of the hook and with two pinch wraps just secure it. Like that. Just check that the tail will flare out nicely. That's it, perfect and make a, make a couple of wraps forward. Cut off the excess so that the material or the goose part would just extend up to the beginning of the thorax, which would be right there. Just build a little bit of a taper right there. Back. Now break off the long section of copper wire and place it on the side of the hook shank at the base of the thorax and then while you run your thread back just manipulate the wire to be on the side to stay on the side of the hook shank. This will create a nice flat profile very much similar to that of a mayfly. Run your thread forward again. Just cover a little bit of the, of the uh, lead wire and leave your thread where your thorax will start. Now with touching turns, wrap your copper wire forward neatly. And take your time doing it. It's fine if there's a little bit of thread exposed. Um, I don't think the fish really care. But if you can, try and maintain control of it. You'll see that it just creates a much better looking body. But you'll see even on my fly, I tend to get a little, create a little bit of gaps. Right, when you reach Point where thorax will start, tie it off and cut off the excess. That is your abdomen done. Now it's time to tie in the flashback as the flashback will lay on the top of the thorax. You'll have to tie it in first because you're going to fold it over. So from this width of material or probably cut half, you want the flashback material to be about the width of the hook gap or slightly thinner, but use the hook gap as a reference. About three quarters of an inch is fine. Move your thread forward to the base of the bead, right there, right there. Wraps and then place the flashback material on top of the hook shank, hold it in place, and just secure it in place with the thread. And then move your thread all the way back to where you ended your um, abdomen. Now, do the same with the scud back material, about the same width and same thickness. Move your thread forward again and tie that on top of the hook shank. Like that. Now I'll take two peacock hole fibers and line their tips. To align it, just cut, cut them, move your thread forward again and lock them in place. Wrap your thread back to the base of the abdomen or where you're going to start your thorax and wing case. Secure it in place. Now wrap your thread forward and very gently touching turns wrap your peacock or thorax forward and once you reach your thread just tie it off. Cut off any excess 
being careful of your thread. Make one more wrap just to secure it. And now it's time to select a feather for the legs or the gills. Break one feather off the cape. This is the feather that I selected. And then remove all the theft at the back of the, the feather. You pull, just pulling it off. You can just clean it up by pulling all these fibers off. You're left with that. Now, with your scissors, you're going to remove the tip to leave a V, like that. You can even make it slightly wider until you're left with that. That is placed on top of the hook, folded over and pinched, like that. And just make two loose wraps around it. Pull it back slightly, like that. And now take the scud back material, not the flashback, just the scud and pull that over as well. You'll see that splays open the, um, the hackle fibers. Pinch it in place, just make two loose wraps again. Now, pull back on the feather while keeping in mind that we're adjusting the legs of the, of the fly. So, adjusting the length of the legs on the fly. Or you want the legs to be as long as where they are tied in to the point of the hook. If they fold it back, they should reach the point of the hook. Pull back slightly, just like that. Maybe slightly shorter. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn around the shank so you can see. Just like that. If they're in place, make two more securing wraps a little bit tight. Now fold over the flashback material, pinch that in place and make three securing wraps. Pull it forward. That is the wing case done. Now we're going to cut off all these materials. Left in place first I'm going to cut off the flashback, then the scud back and then the feather. You'll see we're left with some material over there but we'll tidy that area up. Take your permanent marker and just color the thread and make a couple of wraps while just trapping some of those fibers. It's fine if you leave some. Just want to cut this a little more. And do a whip finish on the fly. Cut off the thread. Almost there. At this stage, you're left with a fly that looks like that. Now take some UV resin and put quite a lot on the top of the wing case. Spread it forward and spread it back so that it overflows into a portion of the abdomen as well. Take your UV torch and just cure that resin. If it's set hard, that's perfect. You can just push your thumb up into the tail a little bit just to splay them open and there you have it a complete copper john i hope that you guys enjoyed the video and that um, you get some insights on tying the copper john please leave any comments or questions down below thanks once again from our side see you again